Welcome to our review of Shikoku, a different type of race game. Before we get started, we have to thank Grand Gamers Guild for getting a copy of this game up to us from Gen Con. Shikoku was designed by Eli Wahadas and features art from Amelia Sales. It was published in 2018 as a joint effort from Grand Gamers Guild and GDM Games. This is a three to eight player racing game with a twist. It plays in about half an hour or so, depending on how much time the players deliberate on their card play. This small box game has an MSRP of 25 bucks US. While having the previously mentioned twist, this is still a rather lightweight game that does involve strategy, but I think a lot of what you get out of this game will depend on who you're playing it with. There. So Shikoku is an island in Japan that many people take a pilgrimage to to avert bad luck. They climb the winding steps up to the top of the temples, saying a mantra and leaving a donation on each step. Now in this game, you are playing a set of such pilgrims, each making their way up the set of steps to the temple. Now the interesting thing about this race is that the journey is all about moderation. You don't want to be too fast, as the player who reaches the temple first will be eliminated. You also don't want to be too slow, as the player who was in last place is also eliminated. In this game, it's the players in second and second last that actually win the game. For a look at what you get in Shikoku, I invite you to look at our unboxing video on YouTube. So to me, the components here are just right for this game. Not too fancy, not too bland. Heck, I guess the theme of moderation really comes out in these as well. You get a beautiful looking board that's really just a 33 step track. You get 33 cards that show a traveler on them, a number and some sandals. Cards in eight colors to no player color and a pair of meeple in each of those colors. There's also a set of rules, of course, that are short, succinct and very clear. The component quality here just works. Mm -hmm. So now that you know what you get with Shikoku, Shikoku, how about you give us some more detail on how to play? How do we go about climbing those steps? So to start a game of Shikoku, everyone takes a card and two meeples in the color of their choice. The card deck is shuffled and a number of cards are drawn equal to the number of players. One meeple per player, which is called their chanter, is randomly assigned to each card, which are then sorted into numerical order. Players then place their other meeple, which is called their climber, at the bottom of the board, at the bottom of the steps, and move them up a number of steps equal to the shoes the card their chanter is on. Players are then dealt three cards each from the deck, and the game begins. This setup both sets up the starting player order, as well as giving everyone their starting positions on the stair track. Now, starting with the player on the leftmost card, which at this point at the start of the game will be the lowest card in play, and moving left along the row, each player will play one card from their hand and move their chanter onto that card. Once all players have played a new card and moved their chanter, you then rearrange the cards and put them in numeric order again from left to right. And then some of the climbers move. Now, in general, climbers are going to move the number of sandals shown on the card just played. But remember, the theme of the game is moderation. The climbers on the second and second last card don't move at all. This is a key element of the game and a big part of the strategy mm -hmm. in Shikoku. You want to play cards that make the right players move while others fall behind, as well as making sure you don't move too quickly by making sure your high sandal cards get played in the right order or making sure they uh, get played so you can catch up. Now, once the appropriate climbers have moved, you're going to begin drafting new cards. So first off, the lowest number card and climber, or sorry, and um, chanter are moved to the end of the card row. So the lowest card goes to the highest spot. That player then gets a random card from the deck. Then the rest of the players are going to draft new cards from the cards that were played that round, like the, sorry, the cards that are already up from the previous round or the ones that are up from the start of the game. Now, at this point, there are always going to be one card left, which is removed from the game. Now, remember, this is a subset of cards. There's only 33 cards total. What's most interesting here is that the same cards continue to rotate in and out of play with mm -hmm. only one new card added to the mix each round. Here's where card counters are going to get rewarded for keeping track of what cards are in play and which aren't. This is a game I think my father would have loved because he was an expert card counter. 
Now, play continues like this with playing cards, moving some climbers, then drafting new cards until at least one player hits the top of the track and reaches the temple. Then the current round continues and is finished. Then victory is rewarded to the player or players in second and second last pace. Note this position is based on the step the player's climbers are on at the end of this final round. Now, since it came up during our first play, I want to reiterate this. All players who reach the temple on this first round are eliminated. It doesn't matter what order they reach the temple. If you reach the top on that final round, you have lost because you're considered to still be in first. So not the order of arrival, but the order on the physical steps at the mm -hmm. end of the turn in which the first player arrives. Yep. Now that we've basically covered all there is to know to play Shikoku, mm -hmm. it's time to move on to our thoughts on this unique racing game. Yeah, it's the uniqueness that drew me to this game. So Mark sent me a list of games to potentially review, and I did a bit of research on each of them. And I've got to say, when I read the win condition for this game, I'm like, I got to try that. That alone was enough to make me want to check it out. I'm always looking for games that do something different from everything else in my collection. And here we have a game that scores like nothing else I have. Now, of course, some people are a bit less flexible. And the fact that there isn't always just one winner is going to run rub some people the wrong way. Yes. Personally, as a less competitive player, though, I'm fine with it, and it makes for some really thoughtful turns because of those unique win conditions. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed Sokoku from the first time I played it. Uh, this is a really elegant game that I expected to be more random. I thought it was going to be kind of all over the place. Well, the basics of the game are simple enough that I think you could play with very young kids. Like, really, all you need to know is how to count. You need to know your numbers, 1 to 33. The game really does reward players who pay attention to what cards are in play and who's drafting what. As I said earlier, who you play with is going to determine a lot about this game, including, but mm -hmm. not limited to, how long each turn takes as you yes. work out plans and strategy. Yeah, as I noted at the very top, uh, the, the gameplay time is definitely dependent on how much thought you put into which card you play. Now, I've noticed that everyone who is playing the, um, playing with that level of attention, right? They're not just throwing a random card from their hand. Take great joy in putting down a card that they know can't be messed with or putting down a card that they know bumps them from their chosen spot like bump someone else right so like i'm gonna play in last that now means you're not gonna move and you thought you were going first and that card play and that move that that especially if you're going late in the turn is a very rewarding feeling it kind of makes you feel smart right and to me that's one of the draws of the game it's like oh look what i managed to pull off i think because of the low knowledge entry point Kids can really feel good about playing this game because mm -hmm. of moments just like you mentioned. Now, where things get a bit wonky is when you change up the player counts. With three or four players specifically, it's only the player in second who moves their climber, and it's only the player in second who can win. This just took something away from the game, especially with only three players. The lower player count, the less manipulation of card order that can happen. That, which to me is the real draw of the game. The less of those smart moments where I managed to sneak in between two other players because they forgot I was holding the 16 when they had the 15 and the 17. Now, I've also heard you get a reverse problem once you get to seven or eight players, as so many people are playing cards that you can't really play to get the spot you need, unless you happen to be one of the last two players to play. And then that point, it gets a little too random because you play your card thinking you're getting away with something just to be bumped all over the order once everyone else has played. Now, unfortunately, with us, sadly, due to the pandemic, we haven't gotten a chance to try the game at that higher. point. But many other people have identified this problem. In general, though, I think you want at least five players for this particular race game. Yeah, the recommended count is five to seven. And from... Even just my two plays, I can't say that that doesn't feel right, yeah. uh, even without trying all the other counts. Now, earlier we mentioned the component quality was pretty much spot on for this game. I do have one thing I want to add to this. So the background of the game, it talks about 33 being a noteworthy number as well as 42. And it made me wish there was like another nine cards in the game and a second side of the board with 42 steps. 
just to give you a bit of variety in your games and allowing you to play a longer game if that's what you'd want it. There are, to be fair, a lot of important numbers in Japanese culture, and I don't know in any way pretend to know them. But for reference, 33 and 42 are the ages that apparently mean suffering bad luck, or you will be suffering bad luck, if you haven't climbed to Temple 23, whose steps number 33. Right. And that's the temple you are actually climbing in this game. So Temple number yeah. 23 uh, uh, at Shikoku. Yeah. Now, the reason I want variety is the one issue I do have with this game is that it can start to feel pretty samey, uh, especially if you play a bunch of games in a short period of time, which is what I happened to do this past weekend. Well, the player count does really change things up. Like playing at four players is a very different experience than playing with five. Individual games at one player count, like playing multiple times at five, do start to feel very similar. You're doing the same thing every turn. You're jockeying for positioning, playing cards number one to 33 out of the three cards you have. Now, I do like Shikoku. I plan on keeping it in my collection, but I think this is best at a game that's going to come out now and then. Something you play a couple of times and then put on the shelf only to bring it out again a month or so later. And it definitely isn't a good tournament game. No, this is not one you're going to see in one of our extra life auctions. The number of times, because we're talking about the player in first and second or second and second last. Well, it's technically the player on the second last two and, and second and second last steps. And multiple players can be on that step. So our first five player game, actually three people won. Then that's just not good for tournament. Now that said, we're in the middle of a pandemic still. If I was still running public play events here in Windsor, I could totally see this being one of those games that I just throw in the milk crate, possibly even keep in the van with me, just due to its dead simple rules and high player count. This seems like a great public play, get to know each other games that it'd work as a starter or a filler or even a game night ender. Indeed, you could get a new player seated and grasping the idea in moments with this game. A really mm -hmm. fantastic way to introduce people to an interesting and different games. Mm -hmm. Though I would hesitate to call it a gateway game, which is frankly an overused term these days anyway. Overall, Shikoku is a very interesting racing game with a cool twist. Features very simple to learn mechanics while still rewarding players who take the time to pay attention and plan ahead. I love the theme and I love the way moderation is integrated into the game in many ways. And I love the fact I now own a game where the players in second and second last come out on top. Indeed, for lightweight games that aren't your standard fare, this certainly fits in a niche. Yeah, if you've got a bigger gaming group that regularly features five or more players, I recommend checking out Goku. It's a very neat game with a short play time that works best at higher player counts. Simple to teach, very accessible, while still having enough meat for experienced gamers. A bigger family with kids, eight and up, I think can really enjoy this one as part of family game night, as it allows more than one winner, which can be a big deal in a family game. Very true. Now, where I can't recommend this one is for groups of four or less, despite what it says on the game box. Like, the game doesn't even work with two players, though I gotta admit I'm tempted to sit down and try if we each play two climbers with two players to see if it happens to work, and it's just not as good with three or four. The real draw of this game is getting a large group to sit down and play together, and your group isn't gonna need this if you don't have that higher player count. Well, that's it for our review of Shikoku, a racing game about moderation and not just speed. What's a game you own that sticks out as being totally unique. We'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Now, before we go, I encourage you to like, share, subscribe, or follow. Doing so really does help more people find our content. And I'd like to invite you to check out my written review of Shikoku over at tabletopbellhop.com.